The male reproductive system includes the scrotum containing the testes or spermatogenesis takes place. As the sperm develop, they travel through the duct system until they're ready to exit the body via the urethra. The urethra is the passageway that the sperm and any associated seminal fluid travels through on the way out of the body. Accessory glands located along the way provide the seminal fluid. The penis is the final segment before the release out of the body of sperm and seminal fluid, commonly known as semen. The testes are contained within the scrotum located outside of the torso. This location allows the temperature for sperm to development to be lower than the body temperature. However, under cold conditions, the testes must be brought closer to the torso to maintain their temperature. There are two muscles that work together co to control the temperature of the testes. The dartus muscle is located just under the scrotal skin, giving it the characteristic wrinkled appearance. The cremaster muscle covers the testes and the spermatic cord works with the dartus in cold conditions to pull the scrotum toward the tor torso, allowing more body heat to be transferred to the testes, maintaining ideal spermatogenic temperature. The spermatic cord is what connects the testes to the torso. Inside the spermatic cord are nerves, arteries, veins, lymphatic vessels, and the vas deferens, also known as the ductus deferens, which brings sperm from the testes into the torso. Seminiferous tubules inside the testes are where the sperm are created. In a cross section of a slide of the seminiferous tubule, you can see several tubules cut, like looking at the end of a garden hose. Inside each tubule, there are cells encircling the lumen with sperm lining the innermost layer. Spermatogenesis begins with the 46 chromosome spermatogonia. These are just inside the edge of the seminiferous tubule and have a dark solid nucleus. Spermatogonia undergo mitosis to form two identical cells called primary spermatocytes, where you can see the squiggly lines of the free chromosomes inside. These primary spermatocytes then each undergo meiosis to form two secondary spermatocytes for a total of four cells, each with 23 chromosomes that you can still see inside the cells if you look closely. Another meiotic division occurs to form two more cells, each for a total of eight cells, still with only 23 chromosomes. These cells, called spermatids, bundle up the chromosomes into tight packages that are seen as dark spots. The spermatids then migrate to the lumen as they form a tail. During this development process, Sertoli cells provide proteins and hormones to the developing spermatozoa. Sertoli cells have 46 chromosomes like a normal cell and are not a direct part of spermatogenesis. Sertoli cells just support the process. Just outside of the seminiferous tubules in the spaces between adjoining tubules called Leydig cells or interstitial cells, these cells produce testosterone. Here is a summary of the cells that you should know from the seminiferous tubules. Spermatogonia, primary spermatocytes, secondary spermatocytes, spermatids, spermatozoa, Sertoli or sustanacular cells, and Leydig or interstitial cells. Sperm and testosterone production are regulated by the hypothalamus in the brain. The anterior pituitary gland releases follicle stimulating hormone which targets spermatogonia in the seminiferous tubules to initiate spermatogenesis. The anterior pituitary also releases luteinizing hormone which targets the Leydig cells outside of the seminiferous tubules to stimulate testosterone production. Testosterone also supports sperm production as well as many physiological characteristics throughout the body like facial hair production and neurological effects. The structure of sperm includes an acrosome cap that contains the enzymes used to penetrate the outer barriers of an egg. The head of the sperm is almost entirely just a nucleus containing 23 chromosomes. The midpiece, which connects the head to the tail, contains a lot of mitochondria to generate ATP for the movement of the tail or flagellum portion of the cell. The spermatic cord leads away from the testes and contains nerve fibers, vessels, lymph tissues, and the vas deferens and is about 18 inches long. 
Looking at a histology slide of the spermatic cord, you can see that the ductus deferens or vas deferens contains a lot of smooth muscle which is involved in peristalsis bringing sperm up and into the torso like an escalator to minimize the effort on the part of the sperm in this migration. The thick coating of smooth muscle along the length of the vas deferens gives it its cord-like appearance and makes it easily palpable. This can be felt through the skin of the scrotum which makes it easy to locate for a vasectomy procedure. In this image you can see how thick the smooth muscle is surrounding the lumen of the vas deferens. Here are vessels for size comparison. Sperm are made in the seminiferous tubules in the testes and as they mature they migrate out of the testes to the epididymis then to the ductus deferens or vas deferens until it reaches the ampulla located behind the bladder. The sperm remain in the ampulla like a holding tank until needed for ejaculation. The sperm is just part of what ultimately is ejaculated as semen. Semen also contains fluid from, from glands to support the sperm and to neutralize acidity in female reproductive tract that may limit the viability of the sperm. The glands that contribute seminal fluid are the seminal vesicles, prostate gland, and the bulb urethro or Cowper's glands. Seminal vesicles are two glandular pouches located behind the bladder and connected to the ejaculatory duct in the prostate gland below. The seminal vesicles are next to the enlarged ends of the ductus deferens vas deferens called the ampulla. The seminal vesicles produce most of the fluid found in semen. Seminal fluid is mostly water with fructose used for energy production by the mitochondria in the midpiece of the sperm. Prostaglandins in seminal fluid serve to affect the cervix in the female reproductive tract to allow sperm entrance. Fibrinogen in seminal fluid causes the semen to coagulate in a gelatin-like mass immediately after ejaculation to provide a medium for the sperm inside to swim through. The fluid produced by the secretory cells of the seminal vesicles remain inside the seminal vesicles separated from the sperm until ejaculation. Upon ejaculation, the smooth muscle in the seminal vesicle walls contract, squeezing the fluid out into the ejaculatory duct at the same time sperm enters the ejaculatory duct from the ampulla of the ductus deferens. This is the first time that seminal fluid and sperm mix. The prostate gland is just under the bladder surrounding the urethra that exits the bladder. It contains several channels through it. The central pathway is the prostatic urethra which is the pathway for urine as it leaves the bladder on its way out of the body. Posteriorly there are two ejaculatory ducts. Each ejaculatory duct receives secretions from a seminal vesicle and sperm from the ductus deferens in ampulla. The prostate gland also functions as a gland contributing 20 to 30 percent of seminal secretions. Prostatic contributions to semen aid in sperm motility as well as buffers to combat the acidity of the female reproductive tract. The bulb urethral glands, also known as Cowper's glands, are a pair of glands located inferior to the bladder at the base of the penis. The primary purpose of the bulb urethral glands is to secrete an alkaline fluid to neutralize any remaining urine in the penile urethra to prevent any damage to sperm. This is the first secretions after arousal. Semen is over 90% water. The odor of semen is caused by amines from the testes degrading to ammonia. The average ejaculation produces about 3 to 5 milliliters or 1 teaspoon of semen with 300 to 500 million sperm. The consistency of semen varies from thick and viscous to watery. The thinner consistency is usually the result of frequent ejaculations but it can vary among men. The urethra has three distinct regions. The prostatic urethra is immediately below the bladder and goes through the center of the prostate. The membranous urethra is a small segment as the urethra exits the abdominal cavity across the anterior wall. After the membranous urethra is the penile urethra. 
along the prostatic urethra, there are sphincter muscles that close upon sexual arousal to prevent semen from entering the bladder or urine escaping during intercourse. The penis is used for both urine and semen transport through the penile urethra. There are two types of erectile tissue, corpora spongiosum and corpora cavernosum, which makes up most of the erectile tissue.